Welcome to the Capital Estate Podcast. We're here to bring you advice and tips from seasoned pros and experts to help you improve your business. I'm Carl Barlam. And I'm Rico Figliolini. Um, I'm with Trans World Business Advisor, and Rico is with Mighty Rocket Digital Marketing and the publisher of the Petri Corner Magazine. Rico, Rico, how about telling us about our sponsors today? Sure. First thing is I just want to let you know we're in the podcast studios at Atlanta Tech Park in Tech Park, Atlanta. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Love the name. In, in the city of Peachtree Corners. So we're uh, in the middle of this uh, accelerator uh, here in Peachtree Corners. Um, and I was at the incubator that's out, Prototype Prime, just down the block. So this is a great hub for technology. So this is where we're at doing this podcast. Part of the Curiosity Lab of Well, actually, the Curiosity Lab actually encompasses now Prototype Prime along with the one and a half mile autonomous vehicle track and um, I think it's the Georgia Tech professional education services that's being conducted out of there as well. Absolutely, a so, live lab in Petrie Corners. Yes, so one, the only one, I, I should probably one of several, but the only one in, New York, in uh, Atlanta. Yes. Wow. That's a, a live lab where people can actually put their autonomous vehicles and stuff in the middle of real traffic on this road. So that's where we are here, just to give you an essence. Um, Petri Corners Magazine and the Family Podcast, which includes Capital Sage, is also a media sponsor for Smart City Expo Atlanta, which is an offshoot of the annual Barcelona event that's done internationally. So this expo happening in September is the first one in North America. Mm. Um, Curiosity Lab at Peachtree Corners will have an off-site demo place, demonstration place, that the uh, attendees at this expo could come to and check out the track and all the stuff that's going to go on there. Because uh, they should hopefully be done in about 48 days, at least a decent portion of that track yep. to be able to share. But Smart City Expo is the first one of three years that they're going to be doing here at the mm -hmm. World Congress Center. And uh, it's all about smart cities and bringing it down to you know, the people that actually would be using them uh, in, in, a broad, in a broad way. So not just businesses. And also I want to welcome our, for the first time, when our medical center, they're a sponsor of our podcast as well. So they're actually opening up a place, they're entering into Petrie Corners. Right. It's called the GMC Primary Care and Specialty Center of Petrie Corners, and they're going to have a lot of premier first-rate primary care services and specialty services. For those people that want to know where it is, if you're familiar with the old Epolitos restaurant, which is the building that's been completely gutted and renovated, just south of the QT on Petri Park. Park. That's right, right across from the forum. So if you can find the forum, you'll be able to find this um, medical if you, center. And if you can find the QT or Planet Smoothie, which is in that same place, yeah. you, you can find it as well. That's it. Good. Thank you very much for introducing our sponsors. Today's guest is Wendy Kenny, an entrepreneur, business owner, and network, uh, network and relationship marketing expert. Wendy opened the Atlanta office of Power Corps back in 1995 and has connected over 15,000 members helping people grow their business through re uh, network and referral marketing. Um, just want to thank you for joining us today, and why don't you introduce yourself a little bit more to our, to our audience. Wendy. Thank you, Carl. I'm honored, and Rico, I'm honored to be invited and to participate in this. I think you're doing good work, so thank you. that's good. Thank you. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit how you got into this space? Oh. Um, I visited my first Power Core team, and all Power Core meetings are at 7 o'clock in the morning, in Melbourne, Florida, at the Hyatt across from the airport. Um, and it was two hours from where I lived. And the reason I agreed to go to a 7 a.m. meeting two hours from home, because you're already mm -hmm. doing the math on what time mm -hmm. I had to leave and get up and all that, mm -hmm. right, was because I'm incredibly shy. I had a hard time getting to events that were close to home. I would very often get dressed, get in the car, drive to the event, circle the parking lot, and drive home. Mm -hmm. And I figured that if it was two hours away, I would actually go in because if I'm, I embarrassed myself, I wouldn't have to kill anyone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that was my first experience in, a, in that situation. Oh, wow, yeah. fabulous. Um, so when you, when you found Power Core, why don't you describe what Power Core is for folks that don't know? So it's a business referral network, and, and there are 21 different types of networking associations. So think of them as languages. Think of them like Greek and French and Spanish and Portuguese. And if I prepared for a trip to Brazil by taking Spanish lessons, 
when I got there, I would be best case ineffective and worst case offensive because they mm -hmm. speak Portuguese, right? And so associations are like that too. Each association has its own purpose, has its own language. And power core is the type of association that is codified close contact. And what that means is that there's a group of people who meet once a week. These people are not in competition with each other. And their purpose is to build the credibility required to recognize and refer their clients to each other. Mm -hmm. So they know each other closely. Mm -hmm. um, and this, the reason that that very first meeting worked for me was because one of the presentations was being done by the CPA. And I sat there during his presentation taking notes and thinking to myself, how come the guy I'm paying isn't telling me this? Why isn't my own CPA mm -hmm. telling me this? And it was so powerful to me to recognize, and I could see right there already, that if I had a question, I could ask the banker just before or after the meeting, and he would have answered me, mm -hmm. right? If I had a question, I could ask the attorney, and he would just answer me. And I didn't have another place in my life where that mm -hmm. existed, and that was my motivation. I, I know that most people join because they want the referrals, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. But my motivation was I need these people in my life. I had just come off a very bad business failure. Mm -hmm. Do you want to know what it was? Mm -hmm. I bought a restaurant. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that would do it all day. Big <laughs> mistake. Big mistake. And and what I realized sitting there was if I had had these people in my life, mm -hmm. I would have not been a failure as a restaurateur. That's fabulous. It, it's interesting having um, advisors and people yeah. that you can go to to help you at, in, grow your business is, is really key. And having this group that by structure, right. you're getting to know them very well. Right. I can see that's building kind of like a, almost a board of director yeah. or your kitchen cabinet or yeah. a small council, whatever you yeah. want to call them. But there's these people that you yes. can go to for those questions. And along the way, you happen to be able to help each other do yes. more business. Yes. And, and when I first joined, I didn't think anyone would have referrals for me. I was wrong, but I was clear. And what I learned and what I tell people now is these people are cheering for your success more than any other people in your life. More than family, more than anyone. These people want you to be successful. They're building you up, they're holding you up, they're introducing to prospects. The, these are, this is your cheerleader, right here. So what do you think people miss when you see folks looking to grow? So I, I talk to business owners all the time. Um, pretty much most of them have a revenue problem. Mm -hmm. They don't grow enough men. Mm -hmm. You ask them, what do you spend on marketing? What do you do for marketing? Mm -hmm. They say referrals. Oh, mm -hmm. I built my business on referrals. Mm -hmm. What are they missing in, in when they're looking at their business and how they're approaching it and how someone that really wants to, to really drive their business using referrals can do? Yeah, two things. The first thing that they're missing is timeline. So someone once explained to me that the difference between a homeless person and Warren Buffett is timeline. The homeless person wonders what he's going to eat tonight. Warren Buffett knows what his grandchildren are going to eat. Mm -hmm. So the homeless person is thinking, can I get 20 bucks? Can I go to Burger King? Warren Buffett is thinking, where am I going to take my family on vacation three years from now? Mm -hmm. And that timeline is crucial for referrals. Cold calling is, I'm going to call you. I'm going to interrupt what you're doing. You're either going to say yes or no to me, and I'm going to move on. Mm -hmm. Referrals has a timeline, mm -hmm. and that's the first thing people miss. They want it to be instant. Wow. Yeah. You meant... No, no. I mean, I, I've been, I, I didn't do Power Core. I did another, I won't name it, mm -hmm. did another networking group, right? The other networking group was more like, wasn't like this. I mean, they had the... I think you should name it. I really do, just because it'll be clearer. It's been a long time. Okay. It, it's BNI. Uh-huh. Yeah. But I just think it'll be clearer. Okay, so BNI yeah. is Business Network International. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's been a long time. Mm -hmm. okay. Same thing, 7 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. We all did the one minute, two minute elevator speech. Mm -hmm. We all had to share leads. Mm -hmm. It was almost mandatory. It was almost like you were shamed if you didn't do it. Mm -hmm. um, and it was always typically the same type of um, business. Mm -hmm. Accountant, mm -hmm. lawyer, real uh, estate agent. Yeah, real estate agent. Yeah, so it's always a difficult. Mm -hmm. and, and I just felt it just wasn't for me. Yeah. Um, and I'm a bit so of an here's, introvert. So it's, here's my response to that. I believe that associations are like blue jeans. Not every pair of jeans fits every butt. 
Can I say that? Mm -hmm. Do I need to re record that? No, okay. <laughs> um, and, and as soon as you try it on, you know if it's a fit for you or not. Mm -hmm. And if it's not a fit for you, it's okay. There's nothing wrong with you, and there's nothing wrong with the jeans. So I have no illusions that anyone should belong to any one type of association. I think that's part of the reason why there's 21 types of associations. Right. I think we all need to belong to three different types, but it doesn't matter which type we belong to as long as we work each type according to its purpose. Right. Right? Yeah, so, so finding out and finding out quickly that it's not for you, I think that's a good thing. Yeah, I don't disagree. I mean, it didn't take me too long. I yeah. think it was about four or five weeks, which I thought was long, but I thought I needed to give it a little bit more. But I find my network and my, my referrals come from a different, you, different space. But you so I want to I wanna address how long is long enough just in the general referral yeah. marketing mm -hmm. thing. So I told you that I, belong to, I believe that we each need to belong to three different types of associations. I believe very firmly that we need to belong to an association where every member is a prospect. Now that would not be a close contact association. So if someone went to a close contact association selling to the people at the table and the people at the table didn't buy with them, they would think they were unsuccessful. However, it would be because they were speaking the wrong language, right? right? Mm -hmm. right. So that's really sure. important. Yeah. So there needs, to, there needs to be, in my marketing portfolio, one association where every member of that association is indeed a prospect for me. Mm -hmm. um, there needs to be a second association in my portfolio where every member is a gate opener for me. A gate opener is a person who will never do business with me personally, mm -hmm. but who's in a position to send me one referral every month like clockwork. And then I need to belong to a third association with as broad a cross-section of people as possible, and for most people that's what Power Core is, mm -hmm. where there's this broad cross-section of people. So watch, I've got depth in the first two, I've got width in the second one, and that depth and width is what gives a marketing plan stability. Yeah. And and I believe that everybody needs to belong to those three things. And then, and so here we go, here, here's, I know that was a long answer to come back. Once my private clients make those three choices, mm -hmm. it's a three-year decision. So now we're coming back to the difference between the homeless person and the homeless, yeah. right? Yeah. So the, the piece here that's important is five or six weeks isn't long enough to know. Yeah. It's just not. Yeah. And it's long enough to know the genes don't fit or you don't like the genes, right? right? right. But once people make a decision, the difference between success and failure in referral marketing is being a member long enough for these people to know you. Yeah. So the team I was at today, I was at Cumberland today, and David Arnold turned in a Weeda business slip from a guy who was a member of his team 14 years ago, 14 years ago, and now that he's moving to Denver, now, 14 years later, of all the real estate agents in the greater metro area, this guy knows David the best. Mm -hmm. And that's a long, that's a Warren Buffett mm -hmm. time frame, yeah. right? So when people use, there's only three ways to get new clients, advertising, cold calling, and referrals. When people use an advertising or a cold calling mindset in a referral marketing mm -hmm. plan, they're always going to be ripping up these plants before the roots have had time to form. Yeah, it's, it's a good good thing to know as, as, as I ventured out and I talked to a lot of different uh, folks and, and participated in some of these different, the getting to know people part of it, if you think about it, mm -hmm. it's hard for me to refer to you and we've known each other for a while now. Sure. And we work together, and I know, and I know what you do. Little by little, yeah. many small conversations, mm -hmm. I know details, but I now know how to listen for things, and I'll say, hey, Rico, there's someone here that you need to talk to because of a conversation we had that if we didn't stick through this and meet every week and chat all the time, yeah. I wouldn't have known that. Yeah. And you know what I find, though? I find, now I don't know if the three organizations you're talking about all, all have to be networking, quote, networking. Because yeah. what I find is that when I belong to an association, let's say the American, the Atlanta Marketing Association, Perfect. which is what really I belong to. That's a really good example of an industry-specific right. association. Now, there I find value because, may, maybe because of what I do particularly, but. Um, no, I think these genes just fit your fit huh. your personality. And maybe, because I don't I don't like being necessarily a member in an organization as opposed to being a board member of the organization. Mm -hmm. I want to be an effective person that can bring value to that organization and in doing so expand the value of the organization and, and bring and when you do that I think when you give yeah 
then you get it. Yeah. So the the key in this three year trajectory is to be a visible committee member or board mm -hmm. member by the end of the first year. Mm -hmm. So everyone needs to be on a leadership track, a visibility track, just from the very beginning. Go find out where there's a hole that fits me, right? Because right. I don't want to volunteer for a board position that's onerous for me, I'm right? Sure. Find, always work in your area of strength. Always work in your area of strength. That, that leads me to, to one thing that does when people get involved in ball, it starts building credibility. Yes. And I know that's one of the important elements yes. of getting referrals. Yes. Help folks understand why credibility is so important and how people build that, can build that. Yeah, so I just came from a uh, lunch conversation with someone who was referencing a, a person who we both know. And he uh, cost himself any referrals from her or from me uh, because he blew his credibility. And he blew his credibility in very specific ways. The easiest way to get credibility is to say, I'll call you at 10 o'clock tomorrow, mm -hmm. and then do it, right? Because if I say, I'll call you at 10 o'clock tomorrow, and at 10 o'clock tomorrow I get your voicemail, and I say, hey, this is Wendy, you're gonna listen to that voicemail and go, ooh, she did what she said he was gonna mm -hmm. do, she was gonna do, right? If you answer the phone, you're gonna be, okay, she did what she said she was gonna do. Mm -hmm. I can count on her, if I refer to her, my clients are gonna experience a good thing. Mm -hmm. The easiest way to bust credibility is to not do mm -hmm. what you said you were gonna do. Mm -hmm. So whether that is not performing well as a leader, or not showing up for a lunch appointment, or not performing in some other way that I said I was going to, that's referral death. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm wondering, as people start putting together a plan on, on building credibility, mm -hmm. uh, are there tools and strategies that they can use to start to, to, to pull some of this together to help them be more, more effective in getting referrals? Yeah. So, so let's start with the concept of meeting one-on-one -on -one for coffee. Mm -hmm. So those one-on-one -on -one meetings, as you just expressed to Rico, those, those meetings where people are just talking and, and beginning a friendship, because referrals are always between friends, mm -hmm. and, and beginning that friendship, those are really important. So I can strategically make a plan to have one coffee meeting in between every meeting of the association. So you like AMA, mm -hmm. meets monthly, in between every month's meeting, you're going to have lunch with some mm -hmm. person from that association. Now watch what happens. Remember my three year path. In month number one, you're gonna have lunch with Art. And when you go in month number two, Art's gonna say, oh hey, I wanna introduce you to Scott and Tom mm -hmm. and, and Jerry. And then in month number two, you're going to have lunch with Betty. And when you go to, lunch, to meeting number three, Betty's going to say, oh, I want to introduce you to Carla and Deborah and Sally. And in month number four, you, are you getting yeah. it? And so what happens is if you have lunch with one person in between every meeting, those people become your advocates and your champions at the next week's meeting mm -hmm. and or the next month's meeting. And by the end of 12 months, 12 meetings, you've got the whole group who knows who you are and knows your name and recognizes you, they don't know what you do yet, but they know who you are, they know what you what you do, they know your name, and if you saw them Friday night at pizza, they'd come up to your table and say hi. Mm -hmm. When people don't have a proactive strategy to do that, that's just, networking doesn't work for them. That's, that's, that's super key. I, I noticed that um, another thing as you, as you um, start talking with folks, if in the closed networking kind of groups, if you're trying to sell to people, mm. that's speaking the wrong language. It's so speaking the wrong language. So if, if I'm trained in sales, yes. and, and, and I know, um, I don't know if you're familiar with Challenger, insight-based selling, some of those kind of things, one of the key things is changing the way someone thinks, introducing new information. Right. If you're not supposed to be selling to, to Rico, because yeah. he's not supposed to be my, he's not my yeah. customer, yeah. What should I be spending my time telling Rico? Right. So um, the book, The Secret Life of Pronouns, is fabulous. The author is James Pennebaker. He's at University of Texas, Austin. And one of the things that he describes is how our use of pronouns affects how people react and respond to us. Mm -hmm. So the pronouns, we, this is what we do, and you, I can help you, are sales pronouns. Mm -hmm. And neurolinguistically, they call them vertically. Vertical. So 
these pronouns make people think I need this, I don't need this. Yes, no, up, down, mm -hmm. in, out. This is for me, this is not for me. These pronouns, what incredible power, mm -hmm. stop referrals. Mm -hmm. Because when I'm speaking to Rico and I say, well, Rico, what I can do for you is, mm -hmm. Rico either thinks, oh, I'd like that, or no, I don't, and then we're done. He's not thinking laterally, which is what neurolinguists call the pronouns I and they. So when mm -hmm. I'm speaking to Rico and I say what I did for them was, mm -hmm. now Rico thinks what is like and what is not like what she's talking about. So I was just talking with Heather and she said, I'm a good referral for your friends who have coffee table books of the mm -hmm. places they visited. Well, immediately when she said that, I thought, ooh, Kevin and Hal, they don't have coffee table books from the places they visited. They get some art, some piece of art from every place they've been on vacation, mm -hmm. and that's their memento for mm -hmm. the vacation, right? Mm -hmm. So that lateral thinking, it's not a coffee table book, mm -hmm. it's a piece of art. Mm -hmm. That lateral thinking is how referrals happen. Mm -hmm. And they happen with the pronouns, this is what I did for them, the person who's not here, not this is what we can do for you, the person mm -hmm. who is here. And that's key to referrals, just key. You know, that's funny because I, I gotta believe that's as you were saying, it's almost like a case study. Isn't it? Right? And then everyone talks about, I want to see yeah. the case study. Yeah. I want to see what you did for someone else. Right. Is that what you're going to do for me? Because right. me, you don't even know me. Right. 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 Well, and yet you're you pitching know? me? Right. Yeah. So, and I don't do that. I hate doing that. Yeah. It, I hate coming up with, I have a toolbox with a hammer and a screwdriver. Right. I know you got nails and screws. I'm going to just <laughs> and bang now everything's going to be hammered. Yeah. Right. Right. If you don't need it, I'm yeah. going to hit you. Yeah. That's what I got. Right. So I need to know who you are first, but you yeah. don't even, you know, if I, at least I give you my case studies right. like that, right? right? What I did for them. Right. Then they might be able to step up right. and say, you know, I, I feel I just, empathy. I understand. I just had an incident where what you just described happened, and now that I'm sensitized to it, I see it coming right at um, at a I don't know just a networking event or meeting some people and someone selling um, uh, I think it was maybe um, employee benefits okay. and said and she didn't know anything about me and she started saying well you know I sell employee benefits and I could do all that stuff and if you have three to ninety nine employees and so on I said wow. She just went in, and then she went from me to the next person. She said the same thing. She went to the next person, next person, next person. And I'm sitting there going, wow, I'd love to pull her aside for a moment and just have a short... Say, honey, which, I can help you. Which I am scheduling a coffee with her, Good. so we're going to have a conversation. But you see when folks do that yeah. a little bit different. There's another thing... I that, think they've been trained to do that, though. Yeah. Don't yeah. you think? Yeah. I mean, they've just... what And, and I remember... The metaphor that I was taught was you're just picking up rocks and saying, is it you? Is it you? Is it you? Right. And it's really uncomfortable to be one of those rocks. You know, when, when I was a stockbroker, it was like that. Yeah. I got a stock, and I don't care who you are, you're going to end up buying this stock from me, right? That's the mentality a lot of them had during and the And we're 80s. over it. Yes. We're just over right. it. It doesn't, yeah. doesn't work that there, there, There's this interesting thing that you introduced to, uh, to me about the file cabinet yeah. and how to look at it. Yeah. And I, I've used... Um, the ideas of it over the years, I didn't realize. Uh, I used it in a different way, but 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 it was a great great way to organize your approach to it. Right. But but basically, offering insights. Yes. When I have conversations with 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 business owners, I'm not selling them a service. Mm -hmm. There's information that I might have that could help them with their business. Right. Um, they may want to know evaluation. They may want to know how to increase marketing. They may whatever it is. I offer them insight to think differently about their business. That's where I start. Right. And then I can pivot from depending on what they need, whether it's a referral, whether I can help them, whether they can help themselves. Right. How do you use this filing cabinet analogy to yeah. help people organize that? So think of a four-drawer filing cabinet. You know, it's about shoulder height. Everybody has one, whether it's in the garage or the basement. They've mm -hmm. got one, right? Mm -hmm. And the four drawers of the filing cabinet are the four things that people want when they come to us. So nobody wants peace of mind. <laughs> they want car insurance, or they want homeowner's insurance, or they want umbrella insurance, or they want insurance on their motorcycle, right? They, they have something they want, and it's called insurance. Now, the name of the filing cabinet in this example is insurance, right? Mm -hmm. And so if I'm an insurance agent, and I go to a networking event, and I say, I'm an insurance agent. If you've got a home, or a boat, or a car, I can help you. People are either going to say, oh, thanks, I love my agent, <laughs> mm -hmm. They're not going to talk to me because 
they feel pitched, right? Or they're going to say, and these are the only two options, or they're going to say, oh, I know a lot of insurance agents. Do you know Tommy Schlosser? Do you know? And they're going to start naming my competition. <laughs> well, there's no money for me if they're talking about my competition. And there's no money for me if they say, don't need you. And so naming the filing cabinet, starting the conversation by naming my filing cabinet is automatic. It's over. There's no place to go. Mm -hmm. If instead I name one of the drawers in my mind, not out of my mouth, in my mind. So let's just, in this example, let's take homeowners, mm -hmm. right? If in my mind I say, I'm shaking hands with Rico, I say to myself, I'm going to play in homeowners. And when he says, Wendy, what do you do? I open that homeowner's drawer, and in that drawer there's 36 different Pendaflex folders. There's 36 different topics in that drawer that I can choose to talk from. Let's say that I'm going to talk about, let's say we've just had a hailstorm, mm -hmm. and I'm going to talk about roof damage, hail insurance for roof damage on a house. And I pull that topic out, and in that topic, there's anywhere from six to 11 pieces of information that I could share. Let's say that I decide to pull out the one file folder that has the information on the conversation to have with an insurance agent when there's been hail damage, right? Mm -hmm. And I, Rico says to me, what do you do? And I say, well, Yesterday, I had a great conversation with a client who had hail damage to their roof, blah, 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 right? Rico knows that I, what the name of my filing cabinet is, and he knows what drawer we're in, right? Mm -hmm. And he responds to me by saying, not interested in that, but what I want to know about is motorcycle, because my 18-year-old mm -hmm. just is looking at a motorcycle. And I slam that homeowner's drawer shut, I pull open the toys drawer, and now I'm talking to Rico about him. Mm -hmm. In minute number two, I'm talking to Rico about him. He knows exactly what we do. And he thinks to me, ooh, that Wendy Kinney, she knows a lot. She mm -hmm. knows more than my guy does. She's telling me more than my guy has told me. Mm -hmm. I've got people to send to her. Yeah. You know what that feels like? That, that's genuine. Yes. Yeah, because I think people want, people are always asking questions about all yes. sorts of things. Yes. And if you're not coming from the yes. face forward, I'm selling to you. Yes. And they're like, you know, I can pick her brain. I can pick one yes. of brain. You know, insurance. Yes. I mean, She'll tell me. Yes. And so that's a better way. This is why you didn't ask me this question. Ask me if there are words you shouldn't use. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the word depends is an anti-referral word. Mm -hmm. We could do a whole cast on all the words not to use. The word mm -hmm. busy is an anti-referral mm -hmm. word. Ask me about that later. Okay. But the word depends. So when someone says, how much does that cost? If I say, well, it depends... They think I'm hiding something. Yeah. If I'm hiding something, I'm not credible. If I say it's $137 for the customer who just bought it yesterday, mm. now they're like, ooh, I need that. Mm -hmm. Or they're like, I'm going to have to save for that. There's never a value in me hiding the price. Mm -hmm. In sale, in referrals, in sales, what everybody who's taken sales training is taught, first, first rule is never address price until first you've established value, mm -hmm. right? Everything about referral marketing is the opposite. So in referral marketing, the first person to talk dollars wins every single time. And our fear is that they'll think it's too expensive. You know what? If they think it's too expensive, they were never going to buy from us anyway. That's you know right. You're right, because that doesn't, that's not your, quote, lead. That's not my client. <laughs> that's not my client. That's, that's not my best client. client. And you know, and you qualified it, though. Just yes. Now, too. You said yesterday for this client yes. it was $137 yeah. or whatever. So that doesn't mean it'll be the same for me. So qualifying it and also helps. But you don't have to qualify. There's research on this. Yeah. Let's say that I say it's going to be $2,000, and you refer me to Carl. And for Carl, it's, and you say to Carl, hey, you need to talk to Wendy. It's going to be two grand. Mm -hmm. And for Carl, it's $2,400. Carl will think he's special. Mm. He'll think, oh, I'm yeah. better than the that's average bear, true. right? Now let's say that for Carl, it's $1,700. Carl will think he got a deal because of you. Yeah. Carl will think, ooh, there we go, he did me good, right? Yeah. And and he does all of that himself. We don't have to do it. Mm -hmm. So so there's no downside to talking dollars if you're doing referral marketing. No downside. I, I love that, and I, I started to adopt that because now I know attorneys and so on, and I start mm -hmm. asking what they, they want to know. I want to know, fee, give me a range. Yeah, give me, give just me tell me something. Because my conversation with someone... Mm -hmm. I'm not selling them legal services. Right. They're always going to ask me right. about how much is that going to cost. How much should I budget right. for that? And so I could establish the budget right. between two people. Sure. 
And that's exactly what happened. Right. I've got to save for that, or now I've got to rethink the right. investment. But I can follow that on and say, well, let's think about your situation. If you invest in this solution, 3000 right. whatever it is right. now, what is it saving you? Right. What other business benefits? Are you going to get right. to take a vacation? Right. Whatever that benefit is, I'm talking in your language. Right. I've almost pre-sold before I refer them right. to, they're not going to say, well, I know you're going to be in this range, mm -hmm. and now that makes it easier for right. the person you're doing, which accelerates um, referrals and business getting done. Yeah, there was another thing that you were um, addressing a minute ago. I, I had a conversation with a woman who's an estate attorney, and her basic, her basic, her, her bottom line is 7000 mm -hmm. Now, I know another estate, estate attorney whose average, not her cheapest, but her average is 1500 right? So the, the first woman is saying to me, oh, how am I going to talk people into 7000 You're not going to talk people into anything, right? You're not going to talk yeah. people into 1500 or 7000 What's going to happen is your best clients never think that 7000 is out of line. That's right. Mm -hmm. Your best clients, yes. and referral marketing is all about best clients. Sometimes people say that they're in a networking group for the low-hanging fruit. That is a mistake, mm -hmm. and it's offensive. Your best clients will not be offended by your price, which is the second reason to be right. clear with your price so that people can select in. Yep. Her best clients don't want to pay $1,500. They want to buy a $7,000 estate plan. Mm -hmm. And the other part of that, I think, from the business side is, mm -hmm. She shouldn't want less than seven thousand because right. if you have to bring your price down to fifteen hundred, no one wins on something. Nobody like that. wins. Absolutely. If right. that's not your price, point. right? If it takes you she doesn't want to take right. less than fifteen hundred. She wants to find out how to talk people who have fifteen hundred dollars into spending seven thousand. Mm -hmm. You can't do it. Right. No. Instead, go networking for the seven for the people that's who right. want to spend that's seven thousand. Right. Yeah. Yep. Perfectly. Perfectly. Yeah. I mean, I I know we could we could continue to talk, <laughs> and, and I and I and I think we're we're gonna have, love to have you back at some point and, and just continue the conversation because I think you you've shared a lot of good nuggets. But I'm but I'm curious, you know, um, what do you have going on, or there there's you know how can people learn more about this stuff if they wanted to get it? So yeah. the PowerCore website is powercore.net, as in networking, and at the top left. There's a place where you can get the 21 types of associations. Mm -hmm. So if that is the first place that you're thinking, what are my options? Mm -hmm. Is American Marketing Association an option for me? Go go get that mm -hmm. download of the 21 types of associations. Um, there are other places on the website where there's more information, and there's also um, a, a list there of the upcoming events. For example, in August, I'm doing a workshop on the filing cabinet. Mm -hmm. So that's something that people awesome. can look at. And if somebody wanted to visit and just you know t take a take a look at yes. and so on, yeah. Um, how many groups there are? How do they get 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 connected and to, to explore if this fits? This would be a good fit for them. Yeah. So the website is powercore.net. On the top left, there's a little thing that says new to Powercore, and they can put their information and find a team, and I'll pick up the phone and call them. Or my phone number is 404-816-3377. And the process is everybody gets two visits, and that's just to try on the jeans yeah. and say. Do they fit? Are these for me? Oh, fabulous. Well, uh, I just want to thank you very much for coming out, sharing some Thanks of this knowledge. Um, I think anyone that, that listens to today um, can take something away from it and change their approach, tweak their approach, and start seeing immediate benefit. Sure. Uh, and if they want to learn more, there's a lot of resources out there. There is BNI, there is PowerCore, yeah. but be intentional with how you use network and relationship marketing to grow your business. Yes. And there's just a lot of opportunity. So thank you today for sharing that advice with us welcome. today. Um, we'd also like to thank Atlanta Tech Park uh, for hosting the Capital Aid podcast here in Petrie Corners. Um, great space for people to come, um, meet other entrepreneurs, other business owners. It is the hub of business in, 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 in the mm -hmm. community of Petrie Corners and the Southwest Gwinnett, the, the Southwest Gwinnett Chamber of Commerce is headquartered out of here as well. And um, what about um, our other sponsors? Yeah, the sponsors include, as we said before, Gwinnett Medical Center, which is entering Peachtree Corners. And the, if you want to find more information, it's gwinnettmedicalcenter.org slash PTC. And they're gonna provide first-rate primary care and specialty services. So that's our main sponsor off there. Uh, and Smart City Expo Atlanta. Looking forward to that. Uh, it's coming up soon. Yeah, September 11th is its first day. It's going to be a great event. And if you're into or want to know more about technology, 
IoT, smart city, if you are a smart, if you are a company that's in sustainable or smart areas of technology, that's the place to come. Visit. Absolutely, all those IoT companies out there, um, it's definitely a place to be. Um, I'm Carl Barham with Transworld Business Advisors. Uh, we help people find um, the right buyers for their business. We help them find the right businesses to invest in and, and just offer them general advice. Uh, think of us as one of your, your board members that just helps advise you on, on decisions you make to help you with your business. And Rico? Sure, I do a few things. I wear a lot of different hats. So I'm publisher of Peachtree Corners Magazine. Uh, which is a bi-monthly publication for the city of Peachtree Corners. Our next issue is going to hit the post office Friday. Its cover story is about the movie industry in and around Peachtree Corners, along with some other great stories. One is about the Boy Scouts, another one is about a local, one of the local five of five swim teams that uh, just won the won a championship oh, okay. in this one. So there's a bunch of things in there. So visit livinginpeachtreecorners.com or Peachtree Corners Life's Facebook page, and you'll get more info there. Uh, and I have a company called Mighty Rockets, uh, mightyrockets.com. You can find a little bit about what I do, and I do a variety of things, product videos, social media, online content, and uh, anything that's in the creative realm. So, and, you're, it's quite a, and you're fabulous. If you haven't seen the Peachtree Corner magazine, it's... It's been well received. It's a beautiful yes. publication. It keeps you up to date on what's going on around the city and just really interesting stories about people. People stop, um, they, they go to the internet for everything, and we have something that you can pick up and read and talk to your neighbor about. So thank you more, for that. A little bit more hyper local. <laughs> ah, so absolutely that's fabulous. And, and just one more thing my daughter's been behind yeah. the camera today. Uh, <laughs> thank Hello. you, Kinsey. Thank you, Kenzie, for joining us. Um, so that's it from the Capitalist Sage podcast. Stay tuned. We'll have more interesting guests that come in and help you find ways to improve your business. Thank you. Carl Barham, signing off.